If you have your Bible with you, would you please turn to me to the book of Samuel, chapter 9, verse 7. I would like to read a verse of Scripture. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on. But you stand still a while, that I may show you the word of God. And I'd like to preach to you from the title of a message, Stand Still and Hear the Word of God. Stand Still and Hear the Word of God. There are many reasons why people will not spend time with God and His Word today. Mostly it's because we live in a very affluent nation and we have so many material possessions and we have so much technology that we cannot peel away from these things in order to hear from the Lord, in order to hear His still small voice. The list of, is endless of all of the distractions that we have. Right now, if you could think about your life and where you're at and how much time you spend with God, how much, you ti- how much time you spend hearing from the Lord for your life, think of all the distractions that are in your life. The gym, fishing, hunting, your vehicle, working on vehicles, making money, spending time with friends, family, and just a thousand other things that have their proper place. But when it snuffs out hearing from God, then it's taken a, um, it's it's taken the wrong place in your life. I heard a, a story of a father that was dying, and while he was dying, he asked his son to put his finger in the flame of a candle and he couldn't do it he could not keep his finger in the flame of the candle and his dying father wanted him to pray for him to pray for his soul while he was uh, had his finger in the candle and when he couldn't do it his father said to him I'm slipping off into hell I'm on my deathbed and you're about to inherit my life's work and all of the inheritance that I work for in in the entirety of my life. But yet you cannot put your finger in the flame of a candle for the length of a prayer for my soul as I slip off into eternity. And in a way we can see in that that our life And everything that we work for, everything that we do, everything, your car is going to rust away. Your money is going to fly away. Friends will come and friends will go, but you can never get that time back. You can never get that time back. And the next guy would not pray for you and pray for your dying soul with his finger in a candle for the length of a prayer to inherit what you what you sold God out for and many are doing that today many are selling God out trading time with God in for other things I think we've all done it but there comes a place and there comes a time that we have to really search we have to really look into um, our heart and see where do we really stand with God Now, the scripture that I read to you said they were going down to the end of the city. Where are you going today? Where is your life heading today? Where are you heading in your life right now? Many lack direction and purpose and insight, yet the Word of God can actually give us all of that. The Word of God can provide that. Well, I'm going to join the army. Okay, then what? Well, then I'm going to build a career. Okay, then what? I might even go to college. Then what? I'm going to get married and raise a family. Then what? I'm going to enjoy my golden years towards the end of my life. Okay, then what? You see, our life, we're really going nowhere without God. We're really going nowhere. We're, we're, our life is like a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. And what I'm trying to do is spur people on 
to think about that for a second. If you just pause and think about the Word of God and its priority in your life, hearing from God and its priority in your life, if I could get somebody just to stop and realize, wait a minute, I'm not giving God anything. I'm not giving Him no time. I'm not even giving Him the time of day. And maybe you could change that very thing. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And here it is. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That's it right there. Verse 14. For God will bring every deed into judgment, along with every hidden thing, whether good or evil. Nothing in life really matters if you're not spending it towards God, if you're not living it towards God. There used to be an old song that we sang that said, only one life and soon it'll pass, but only what's done for Christ will last. It's all fading away. Your youth is leaving you. Your health is leaving you. The days that have been given to you are passing you by. Your money is taking wings and flying away. Your reputation head, uh, hangs by a thread. But with Jesus in your life, with Jesus in your life, hearing from God, spending time with the Lord, stand still a while and hear the Word of God. All of that can bring everything else in life into focus and centered and bring purpose and direction to your life. When the devil wants to convince people they do not need to serve God, he does not even bother trying to tell people there is no God. But what he does is he tries to convince people that uh, you have plenty of time, no need to seek God today, no need to give him your life while you're young, no need to seek God while you have good health, no need to hear from God now. See, he's not going to try to convince you that God doesn't exist. He's just going to tell you that you have plenty of time and you don't. The other part of that verse said, bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on, but stand thou still a while. You stand still a while. You see, if God is calling you to spend time with him, you shouldn't be looking at the other guy. That other guy may have had his chance and spent it. If others are partying in the barracks, but God is tugging at your heart, you need to stand still before the Lord and hear his word and prioritize him. If other people get to do what they want, go where they want to go, but God has a, a call on your life, you need to stand still and hear that call and hear God guide you. God has left some people to their idols. Don't let that be you. Hebrews 3 references um, what the Holy Spirit said to the children of Israel. He said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. If, if, God is, if the Holy Spirit is talking to you today, don't harden your heart. God was trying to get Israel's attention, but they rebelled and went their own way and ended up wandering in the wilderness for 40 long years. It was something like a, like a three-day journey. Um, it was just a matter of a few miles, roughly, to get where they needed to go to the promised land. But they wandered around and around for 40 years, 40 years, because they hardened their heart when they had a chance. They hardened their heart when it was time for them to move by faith and obedience. Many of you today are at Fort Hood. I guarantee you, you're wandering around in that wilderness at Fort Hood. That wilderness of dissatisfaction and emptiness, of no purpose and no guidance and no God in your life. And you will continue to wander in that wilderness unless you come to the Lord and make things right. God will allow you to go 20 years in the military without fellowship with him. 
He will allow you to die spiritually if that's what you want. In Hosea 4.17, it says, Ephraim is joined to his idols. Leave him alone. Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. When God is tugging on your heart to stand still and hear his word, but your idols are in the way and you don't cast those idols, idols down and put those idols in its proper place, God will leave you alone. He will leave you alone to yourself, to your own ways, to your own methods. Ephraim is joined to his idols, leave him alone. Here's how another translation said it. The people of Israel are under the spell of idols. Let them go their own way. This is God speaking. Here's another one. Ephraim joined to idols has placed stumbling blocks against himself. If your idol is your vehicle, your big truck, if your idol is, is the, the amount of guns that you collect, you're placing a stumbling block before yourself. Think about that. Here's another one. The people of Ephraim have chosen to worship idols. Leave them alone. You see, when you pre push God aside and you allow your idols to come in between you and God, you're choosing to worship those idols. You're choosing to worship your body. You want to get big, bench press 480 pounds, and um, you know squat. You want to learn martial arts. You want to go out hunting. All these, all those things have the proper place, but not when you snuff God out to do those things. Not when God has been placed on the back burner for year after year after year. God is talking to somebody and calling somebody to make the right decision to put him first and to let go of your idols or else God will leave you alone before you know it you'll have 15 years in the military and you're still not serving God the word joined the Hebrew when you look into that I, I, I love doing word studies uh, but when you look at the Hebrew meaning of that it means to unite to tie a magic knot or spell or to charm you see Ephraim's idols had seduced him and he married them he united with them he became one with them do you see a picture of you today with your lifestyle with what how you spend your time and what you do have you have you married your idols have you become one with them have you tied a a knot because of a magic spell and charm? The word idol can be anything you place as a higher priority than God that comes in between you and God, that harms and destroys your fellowship with God. Alone, God is saying you have put space in our relationship with this idol between us. You want space? God will give you space you want space God will leave you alone stand still a while and hear the Word of God while you're stationed at Fort Hood you will have to make a choice whether or not you will follow God or follow the devil that's right you're gonna have to make a choice you know you know what's forcing that upon you right now the fact that I am here preaching his word that's why we are responsible for what we hear and we are responsible to make the correct decision you know if you hesitate with God God will move on God is God will not just wait forever he, he will not always strive with flesh and he, he may not always be there there will be a line someday some at some point of time God can leave you to yourself so if he's knocking on your door today to hear his word, I would like to challenge you to make God's word and hearing his word a priority in your life for you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit does his work and just convicts hearts today. You have heard, as I'm closing, you have heard the saying lost in space. Well, tens of thousands of soldiers at Fort Hood are lost in place 
They're right there. They're right there on an army post. And they're lost in the great place that may not be so great. Maybe the great place isn't so great to you. You get God in the, in the midst and in the mix with you. And you spend time with the Lord. And you study His Word. God, and you fellowship with Him. And you obey His Word. God will bring such satisfaction and joy and peace into your life that it will blow your mind. Other people will wonder why you look different, why you act different. It's true. Stand still and hear the Word of God. I'd like to read this uh, couple scriptures to you. In Psalms 119.9 it says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. Stand still and hear the word of the Lord. Psalms 119, 130. The entrance or the unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple or the untrained and inexperienced. Matthew 4, 4. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Isaiah 48, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. Stand still and hear the word of God. This, this word of God will be present on judgment day. How in line with it are you? James 121, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Last one, Psalms 135, I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait, and in him, and in his word, do I hope. In his word, do I hope. Today, I would like to invite you to fall in love with your Bible again, to fall in love with spending time with God again, to fall in love with seeking his voice and, and seeking God's presence in your life again. God bless you.